more boxes taking over the office. Let me show you. So here, here, here. But today I mostly care about this guy. The Streetcom DB4, a beautiful aluminum cube. Now you might recall me doing this whole abstract thing of filming this case inside a park. Wow. That was actually pretty fun except for a very close call with a bicyclist who almost knocked out my camera. But the point of this video is this, the LH6 but the point of this video is the LH6 cooling upgrade kit. So I have extra heat pipes in here so we can connect the CPU to two walls instead of one. Let's get started. Every day, treat yourself with the best quality sound to complement any lifestyle. Your ears deserve a Sennheiser Momentum product. Move freely with the gorgeous Momentum in-ears or style it up with the Momentum in-ear wireless with the leather neckband and up to 10 hours battery life or fully zone out with active noise canceling Momentum wireless available in over-ear or on-ear pairs. Enjoy your music with Sennheiser. Move with the Momentum. Full details in the description below. I can hide easily, but what do I do with this? So we get extra heat pipes, extra mounting brackets, looks like we have extra aluminum bases, and hopefully this amount of thermal paste will be enough. And so the whole premise of the DB4, let me remind you, is for it to be a completely fanless profile. So there are no fans in this system. Uh, and so therefore we're actually utilizing the case itself as the heat sink. So in the original, we connected our 4690K to one side panel. So that's the default configuration. But this would, with this LH6 kit, I'm allowed to route those uh, heat pipes onto two side panels, allow me to, you know, give me double the, uh, the heat sink capacity so that I can actually overclock that chip. Come on, yeah, getting inside here isn't easy. Now my initial idea with this upgrade video was to put an SFX power supply and the GPU so that I could turn this into a proper gaming station, but because there's zero airflow, the GPU would get really hot. I decided to just stick with the CPU. We're gonna overclock it and see just how good the side panels can cool it. Now for the CPU, I'm using a 4690K, which is an i5. Uh, it's a quite old CPU, but still it's very capable. And um, the reason why I'm using it is because it's an 88 watt CPU of TDP, whereas one of these side panels is rated at 65 watts. So with this upgraded LH6 kit, uh, I'm able to increase the cooling capacity of this case to 105 watts. So I'm still within the limit of the CPU TDP uh, and hopefully give me a little bit of overclocking headroom. So this is the original heatsink design. So you can see the CPU block. There are four copper heat pipes connected directly to this another aluminum block that connects to the side panel. But uh, so we will be restructuring this to add two more heat pipes uh, in total to make six so that um, we can cover two side panels. trying to arrange all the heat pipes in the correct order, but also having to deal with thermal paste. And I think my motherboard does not have the proper CPU socket orientation. It is a very messy process as you can see. And just as I thought, the CPU socket on this motherboard actually does not align with the LH6 upgrade kit because these uh, heat pipes are supposed to sort of exit and go below the motherboard like so, but um, they're not long enough. And so if the CPU socket was closer to the top area, that, that's, that would have been optimal. But uh, I'm gonna have to see if I can rotate these heat pipes to come out from this end. Luckily, I can just simply take out these heat pipes without needing to remove the entire block. Wow, I did not expect them to be this soft. Like I can seriously, look at this. Okay, so there we go. This is how it's supposed to mount. Uh, now I just have to make sure that the distance from the motherboard to the side panel is correct. Uh, and then if not, I can sort of insert them a little bit further into the CPU block so that I can have everything mounted. But in this case, we are blocking that PCI slot. 
And the moment of truth. Good thing the motherboard tray is removable, simply slides in there without any problems. Bam. All right, so the motherboard's in. Now what I have to worry about is the distance from this, from these aluminum blocks to the side panel. And from what it looks like, it seems like it would, uh, yeah, actually touch, so we're good. This is one of my least favorite motherboards to work with because the I.O. connections are not labeled, so you have to always look in the manual uh, on where everything goes. And it's just such an awkward layout, man. So this is quite frustrating, I will be honest, because these heat pipes are so soft, and I guess when I was placing them inside uh, the block, they bent, and so these per these parts that have to enter this aluminum block are not exactly straight, so I cannot push the aluminum block beyond a certain point unless I really sort of, you know, push it really hard and in the process it straightens out these heat pipes. Oh man, you really gotta be in the right state of mind trying to work with these little brackets and everything being so tight inside. But the SSD is installed, I just have to apply thermal pads and put some more thermal paste on this panel, close them up, and uh, hopefully let's begin the overclocking. And my only concern here is the power delivery because the power supply only has a four pin for the motherboard, uh, which usually accepts an eight pin. So I'm hoping that will not be a problem when we try to push the CPU. And because of this particular layout on the motherboard with the cables coming out at this end, this is where the LH6 kit upgrade is supposed to exit. Not possible, we had to rotate it to the GPU area, you know, beside the PCI slots and stuff. And so therefore, there's no way I can install a GPU here now because uh, yeah, this motherboard doesn't allow it. So we have two of these heat pads or thermal pads. The one advantage with these thermal pads is they don't cause any mess. Uh, but with this uh, place, uh, they do recommend using thermal paste. As you can see, it's a little bit messy, but uh, with the thermal paste, we get a much better uh, cooling dissipation. Uh, wait, no, wrong side, damn it. See, one advantage of uh, using thermal pads. Bam. Thermal paste first. Bam. All right, so now that the system is finished, let's set it up. All right, so let's turn the system on. It is so weird not hearing any fan noise, nothing spinning up, no beeps, absolutely quiet with the DB4. And as you can see, temperatures at idle are pretty good. We're hovering or like around 35 at lower 30s. This is at 3.9, uh, 3.8 gigahertz. So pretty good. I wanna stress test this now, and then let's see how far we can push it with the overclock. All right, so now we're starting to stress test and uh, the temperature is a little bit toasty. As you can see, we're reaching almost uh, 100 degrees on one of the cores, but the other cores are relatively cool in the uh, mid 80s. To the touch, all heat pipes are warm, so that's that's very good. Uh, both aluminum uh, plates here and there are really hot, uh, along with the main plate right here, that's also really hot. Uh, but I'm assuming that the actual socket plate uh, on the CPU isn't aligned properly because you know the the discrepancy or the variation between the CPU temperatures between these cores is quite significant. So I might have to remount it just to make sure that that uh, CPU block is on the CPU entirely. All right, so I did uh, wiggle the CPU block down a little bit, so hopefully that covers more of the CPU or potentially you know have a bit more consistency across the entire block. Uh, let's uh, put the memory back in and retest. All right guys, so after doing more stress testing, CPU temperatures remain pretty much exactly where they were, uh, around 100 degrees on the, the hottest core. And I'm, I'm running uh, W prime right now. So my theory behind uh, this hotness is, um, well, this panel, you know, the main heat pipes are attached here and they're connected via thermal paste versus thermal pads on this side. And this panel is significantly hotter to the touch versus that one. However, both or all heat pipes inside are very, very hot to the touch. So my thinking is that the heat dissipation from the heat pipes uh, from the aluminum plate doesn't translate very well to here, right? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put thermal paste uh, instead of the thermal pads 
and we'll see if that does anything. Now, the one really interesting thing I've discovered with these side panels is that you yourself with ice cold hands can dissipate some of the heat that is accumulating on this uh, side panel. So after washing my hands in the ice cold water, I applied both of them onto the side panel and I noticed a slight decrease in, re in temperatures in real temp on all cores. So that's pretty interesting. Of course, uh, once my hands got really warm, uh, the temperatures went back up again where they were hovering around like high 90s. But uh, it was still quite interesting to see things that drop by a few degrees uh, simply by touching the case. All right, so let's peel these off. And the problem with thermal pads is, you know, they how do you store them after you use them? Good thing in there, don't leave much of a mess. So now that the thermal paste is in there, um, interestingly, we did drop a few temper, a few degrees on the seep, on the cores. Not sure if that's because the top is open or the thermal paste is actually you know acting up. But the main thing to feel here would be uh, the side panel after some load to see how warm it gets, uh, because it wasn't getting really warm, not as much as this panel. And even after applying thermal paste, uh, well, it looks like we're reaching 100 degrees and you know what that's understandable because the cpu is quite hot plus uh, the side panel can only hold so much heat and there's nothing removing that heat away from the actual side panel so you you know streakom has done a fantastic job of removing the heat away from the cpu but how do you handle cooling of the actual chassis so yeah all right i caved in i installed a fan in my fanless system it is on the exterior and it's running very quietly at 500 rpm and just a tiny bit of airflow uh, delivered from the exterior dropped my low temperatures by 10 degrees so we went from high 90s to hovering just under 80 degrees celsius which is actually so amazing and proves my theory of having this uh, really excellent um, you know, heat delivery to the side panels, but if there's nothing to dissipate that heat away from the side panels themselves, then you're stuck with a hot CPU, especially if you're constantly running it at load. So it's pretty interesting to uh, discover this tiny bit of airflow and how much heat dissipation and how much extra cooling you get with just one additional fan on the exterior. And finally, we can overclock a little bit, CPU ratio at 42. Voltage at 1.2. Hopefully that's not too hot for the system, especially now with the fan added. Let's see how it, uh, how it handles. So right now at 4.2 with the 1.2 volts and yeah, already reaching 100 degrees very quickly. So the overclock is not staying. It's not gonna, this, this case cannot handle such high temperatures. So as you can see, we're throttling already. Uh, maybe 1.2 volts is too much. And so now I lowered the voltage to 1.12. Hopefully that uh, has it stable. So far, no crashes. I mean, they're still rising to 90s, but uh, let's see if it reaches the 100. Uh, well, it seems like we're approaching back to the 100 degrees mark. So regardless of the voltages, I think that, you know, this, this uh, case has a lot of potential for lower wattage CPUs, maybe i3s and uh, more efficient Skylake stuff and uh, maybe KB Lake too. But uh, it's been really an interesting ride trying to find what's the optimal thing to do with this case and adding a single fan to cool the exterior has been has proven to be very useful i'm very happy with that but this case is really not meant to be for enthusiast overclockers anyway so uh, but i'm glad that i went ahead and tried to figure out what what this case is really you know squeeze out all the potential so i hope you guys enjoy this video make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more coverage of everything that's coming from this office Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.